before continuing on with this video, I want to make an announcement that this Saturday at 11 Mountain Standard Time, we're going to be holding a group session for males and females, a Q&A session. We can bring any kind of questions to the table. This is going to be more of an open discussion as time goes on. I'm also going to be planning to create more group sessions in the future. However, I'm still finalizing how I want to strategize and organize these kinds of group sessions in the future. I'd like to have themes for each group session and topics that we can address in each one. But if you want more information about that, you can look at the Regal Change Academy URL, which is in the description box below. Now, with that being said, the topic for today is how narcissists try to shred away your willpower. Now, a lot of the times you may not even notice this is happening. You may not even notice that your will to live and thrive is being stripped away from you. I can't tell you how many different times I've been on calls with people and even in just my own life where I've had experience with narcissists where people have said that they felt as if their lives were stripped away from them and they feel as though their realities were just completely flip-flopped on top of themselves. And this is what happens with the narcissist. The narcissist is going to try to make sure that you are unaware of their tactics. And they do this by disguising their tactics with love bombing. They do this by coercion. They do this by bribing. They do this if they're a female. They usually do it through their sexuality. And then for males, they usually do it through some kind of sense of power or status. Now, any woman out there that is seeing men flaunt their wealth in front of you or trying to flaunt their status in front of you, you should immediately be cautious. You should immediately be aware that this is a man that is not secure within himself to see that he has something more to offer than just his money or his status or his power. A lot of the times, males that are narcissists choose women that are obviously hurt and that are obviously healing from their past. Women, if you are watching this video, the best defense that you have against male narcissists is to grow closer to the, to the Most High and to grow closer to God. Because in that, you're going to receive spiritual strength. When you are hurt, the narcissist, the male narcissist, believe me, can smell blood in the water. It is like a human shark, okay? The narcissist, the male narcissist is like a human shark, whereas the female narcissist is like a siren. The siren, if anybody is unaware, is a story from Odysseus. And it, it is in the Odyssey. It is the book and the epic written by Homer. The sirens, when Odysseus was passing by in his ship, they were singing these beautiful songs, and they were lavish. They were beautiful. But if you were to actually pay them more attention and give them more time of day than you needed to, in fact, I think the story goes that if you actually even just gave in to the slightest, you'd be under their spell by the way that they sang. And this reminds me of some kind of similar verse in the Bible where it says that a a woman that is uh, has, has words smooth as a honeycomb will actually drag you to hell and will actually lead you into the pit, something along those lines. That's exactly what the female narcissist is like. So men that attract narcissists, in my experience, have generally had some kind of relationship issue and incompatibility with their mother. And 
it's also been the case that men that are, well, women that are attracted to male narcissists have had issues with their father. This is, this is very natural. This is very understanding in regard to the actual consistency of the relationship between narcissists, whether you're male or female. And the reason that this is, is because what's really going on is that if we look at it from a psychological point of view, specifically Jungian psychology, now remember there is the persona, the ego, the shadow, the anima or the animus, and then the self, which is the deepest rooted archetype, you can say, of your psychology. The persona is what we all perceive to the world, right? We all wear a mask to some degree. The ego is what I want, what I would like, what I need, what I have. It's, it's this essence of self in some sense, but it's not the self, okay? And then you have the shadow, which is where you begin to reach into the darker side of your personality. This could be a kind of aggression. This could be a kind of darkness or sadistic or masochistic tendency. And everybody has these, but not everybody is able to accept and create a holistic perspective for their shadow and integrate it properly within themselves. Then you have the anima and the animus. The anima is the totality of feminine experiences within a male psyche, and the animus is the totality of masculine experiences within the female psyche. So what is really going on when you are attracting narcissists is that you are projecting, whether you're male or female, you are projecting your anima or your animus onto these people. Now, we do this whenever we are in romantic relationships or even at work to some degree, but but it's also important to note that the anima and the animus are always a relationship that we have to a part of ourselves. It is actually not something that is found outside of us. This can be very difficult to comprehend because the projection of the anima or the animus can also be a cause for a psychosis. Now, this is also one of the reasons why a lot of the times people with narcissistic abuse and that have experienced narcissistic abuse can lead to a spiritual awakening. It's because you go through a kind of psychosis with all the gaslighting and with all of the, just the masquerade and the craziness that you have to go through. You know, your mind is literally jumbled like ping pong balls in a really tight container. And there's no way to even see or organize these ping pong balls. You are in a situation where it seems as though everything around you is like quicksand around this person. You just get sucked into this weird reality, this this illusion around this person. You start to feel as though you are just incomplete without this person, and yet whenever you're with them, you feel worse. You know, and this is one of the most, I think, disgusting parts of being involved with narcissists, is that they can manipulate your mind in such a way, in such a malicious way, true malevolence, in fact, that they can make it seem as if you need them when you really don't. And what is really going on is that your nervous system is being designed to attack itself. Your nervous system is being designed to reject its proclivity to have safety and wellness. And so the longer that you spend with a narcissist, the harder it's going to be to heal. And believe me, someone that has been around narcissists almost their whole life, it took immense inner work to do 
this this healing. It took immense spiritual practice to heal. However, it was with God that I was able to fully heal and accept the burden and carry my cross, as as we would say, metaphorically speaking. It's it's going to be very challenging to break things off with a narcissist if they do have some kind of connection to your willpower. And it's going to be very challenging to take back your willpower if they do have some sense of control over you. Now, specifically as a woman, and it's good to submit to your husband and to the man that you are with. It's good. I, I'm Again, I'm not going to advocate uh, for for marriage per se on this channel because sex is marriage according to the Corinthians. But that's all the more reason to be careful with who you choose to have sexual relationships with. Women especially. Because you are the ones that are being penetrated. You are the ones that are going to be more emotionally involved than men. Men are the ones that are actually doing the thrusting, okay? Let's just keep it 100. They're the ones that are actually doing more of the the force. And so they're actually putting their force, their life force into you. And this is actually scientifically proven as well. A woman that engages with a man sexually actually receives and keeps his DNA for an extended period of time, anywhere between four to eight years, as far as my research is concerned. Anybody can correct me on that, but that was what I found with my research. And so you're going to be whole, and and if you're spiritually inclined to this person, if you're spiritually related to this person, and you have a soul tie, then it's going to be even more challenging for you as a woman. And there have been women that I've done consultations with one-on-one in the past where they have told me about their experiences. And obviously, there were some complications with their relationships with men, and there were some complications with their relationships with their father. And the reason for that is because they didn't have the proper leadership. They did not have the proper leadership. So it wasn't until it was too late, really, that they started to realize that they did not have the proper leadership. And so as a woman, it's going to be very challenging for you because it is good to submit to the man that you're with, but you have to know who's worthy to submit to. You have to know who's worthy to to actually lead you because you can want a man all you want. You can, you can want and need a man all you want and need, but if you don't have the right man, a righteous man that is able to lead you out of the pits of your own sorrow, it's going to be, and if the man is even willing to do that in the first place, because a lot of the times what keeps a woman from being in those pits of sorrow is her sexual purity. That's one of the reasons why the Bible is so, uh, I would say, insistent on sexual purity. And it's one of the reasons why men like sexual purity for women as well. But the more soul ties that you have, you're, you're carrying the essence of these men. Whether you are spiritually aware of this or not, you are carrying the essence of these men. And you are going to be, it's almost like a piece of your soul, woman, is in various places across the universe. And so it's going to be very challenging for you to actually come back to yourself without God. All, all, unless you're all in on God. And that's, it's going to be, that's that. So your purity, your your ability to actually stay true and to plan out. This is another thing I think one thing 
Well, this is something that women can do better as far as not falling for these narcissists is that they can actually have long-term thinking skills and communication with themselves. Think about the long-term consequences of your actions. Think about what's actually going to happen if you're continuing to be with this person that does not make you feel as if you are even a human being. Now, I'm not saying that the men out there should just cater and coddle women. That's not what I'm saying at all. I think that's going to be more hurtful to women than helpful. And all of the nice guys out there that are going to just cater to this woman, I think it's going to make a lot of things worse. But you need to genuinely think about the long-term consequences of your actions and actually start to think more about your rational quality of, of being. I think one of the most qualifying reasons that our society is the way that it is is because women do not have even the possession of logic in their in their psyche anymore. Like they don't have morals and they they're not taught morals and they're not really taught how to think. They're taught how to regurgitate information. And that goes for most people nowadays, but specifically women. And so how to think you need to learn how to think women you need to learn how to think it's not just about thinking it's not just about feeling it's about how to think how to think is going to be much more challenging for you i understand because your biology is just not built that way and i'm not trying to be a misogynist or anything when i say that i'm just being genuine about the fact of the matter but this is going to be the way that you are able to steer clear of these narcissists if you are not led by a proper man in your life. And as far as the men, the ways that you can identify a woman is how masculine she is, how controlling she is. If she's trying to make you form to her frame and she's trying to take your balls metaphorically speaking, hell, even even literally in some cases, I guess, but if she's metaphorically trying to take your strength, your spiritual strength, it's it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing at all. And so there's a fine balance to be had. And if she's going to be highly sexual in her in her ways of of trying to be with you, if sex is the only thing that she can offer you, it's likely the case that this person is a narcissist because they are of the flesh. Narcissists are of the flesh. And unfortunately, a lot of women are taught nowadays that that's all they really have to offer. And they do. And, and it's funny because that's not what they're told, but it is what they're told. So what do I mean by that? They're covertly told that their sex is all that they have to offer. That's one of the reasons why I think OnlyFans is so popular. I think that's one of the reasons why everything in our capitalist market is becoming more and more sexualized each day. And it's because it sells, right? It, it, the whole sex sells in the, in the marketplace. And men are stupid enough to buy it. So the, the thing that you have to do as a man is to become spiritually inclined to what kind of person this is. What kind of person is this in, far, in front of you? What kind of woman is this? Is she going to be the kind of person that is going to be able to be a certain kind of person with you? I don't say to any man to listen to women and what they have to say at face value. And the reason for that is because most of the times women do not mean what they say at face value. (laughs) They do not. They usually have some kind of covert way of going about things. And I watch more of what women do rather than what they say. And so if you also, men, 
one of the things that you could also do is have a woman do things for you. You know, name something that she can do better or that something that you would like to see her do better. And it's not that you're trying to be rude. It's not like you need to be a jackass about it. You just need to say, look, I've noticed this about your behavior and I would like to see more of this. Just very clear, very direct and have a backbone. And if she is a narcissist, she's going to try to manipulate or gaslight you into you being the problem. But if she's a genuine woman, she's going to think about it and she's going to say either like, well, she's not, she's not going to have like, look, (laughs) when it comes to accountability and a man that this woman is actually into, it's going to be very challenging for her not to do what she, what you want her to do as a man, because she wants to please She wants to be, she wants your validation. And if changing her behavior to fit your validation is going to be the case, then she's going to do it. If she actually cares, if she actually cares, but if she doesn't care and if she's a narcissist, it's likely going to be the case that she's going to try to gaslight you. And at that point, you need to run as fast as you can in any other direction apart from her. So with that being said, I think I'm going to stop this video right here. I've said everything I'd like to say. I do have more information about this topic, of course, but I think this is a good place to stop for the day. I hope this message was useful and insightful. And until next time, peace be with you.